My name's Miles Morales. For the past year, I've been this Diamond's one and only Spider-Man. And things are going great. I come alive in the dark. And I keep getting stronger. Miles! We gotta talk. Oh, Gwen? Wanna get out of here? <laughs> this is unbelievable. So wait a minute. There's an elite crew with all the best spider people in it? That's Miguel O'Hara. He's like a ninja vampire. The whole thing was his idea. We're trying to keep the multiverse from collapsing. So what's a guy gotta do to join this spider team? You can never be part of this. Come on, go easy on the kid. He had a terrible teacher. Peter, you got a kid? <laughs> oh, here we go. I'll take it from here. Miles, being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. Hands in the air! That's the job. So we're just supposed to let people die? You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. I can do both! Spider-Man always... Not always. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Stop him! Now! I'll pull the sword out the border, walk the floor full of copas, go to war with you all, we can brawl toward the toe. Is it what we talked about? Is it what we talked about? We are supposed to be the good guys. We are. Everyone keeps telling me how my story. Nah. I'm gonna do my own thing. All stations, stop Spider-Man. Hello, Spider-Man. Hi. Hey. Not you. I think he means me. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my brand new Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse trailer. There's a bunch of new footage and Easter eggs. They also showed off a much longer scene at CinemaCon, so I'll break that down during this, too. Also explain what their plan is for having the characters show up in Avengers Secret Wars because it has to do with the part three movie Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse in the way that part one was into the Spider-Verse. Now part two is across the Spider-Verse. Part three, which is releasing next year, will be called Beyond the Spider-Verse. So I think when they say Beyond the Spider-Verse, that's also a tongue-in-cheek way of saying that the characters will appear in live action during Avengers Secret Wars. There'll be a bunch more footage for this really soon too. Be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. And really cool news, doing a special giveaway because it is also Star Wars week in addition to Guardians of the Galaxy coming out. So the Star Wars people asked to sponsor one of my giveaways. Amazon and Star Wars have just released these new limited edition Star Wars Echo Dot stands. There are three of them you can pre-order right now. A Stormtrooper, a Darth Vader helmet, and the Mandalorian's helmet. I'll be giving all three of these away to random commenters on this video. The Echo Dots work with Amazon's Alexa system, answering your questions or providing instructions or recommendations or helping you stay organized. You put the Echo Dots inside the different helmets and they give off these cool lighting effects just based on what you're asking them or the way you interact with the Echo Dots. Really good example is asking them Star Wars questions. Alexa, begin my Jedi lessons. Welcome Padawan. This lesson is called the hamper speaks back. As Yoda taught us, the best master is a cute little puppet. You can make your own with an old sock and googly eyes. If the sock looks and smells like it's 900 years old, that's even better. To continue your training, just ask me for another Jedi lesson. Alexa, how do you build a lightsaber? According to WikiHow, here's how to make a lightsaber using everyday items. Step 1. Find a torch, flashlight, that emits a white light. The brighter, the better. If it's too weak, it may not do the trick. Most flashlights you find in your bottom kitchen drawer will do the job just fine. If you find a flashlight slash torch that's too dim, try replacing the batteries. You can ask them all kinds of questions. They don't have to just be Star Wars questions. And you don't have to add batteries to the different Star Wars helmets. You only have to plug in the Echo Dots and Amazon's Alexa system works to an app on your phone. You can pre-order them right now. I'll include a link on screen here and down in the description below, so be sure to check it out. But at the beginning of the new trailer, Miles Morales recaps what's happened to him since the events of the last movie. It's been a little while. That's why he's a little bit bigger, a little bit older. His powers have gotten a little bit stronger, as you see during the trailer, like he's able to evade the spider army or whatever you want to call it, spider society. If you actually signed up for the special text that they're doing for this movie, they call it spider society. 
I've also heard the directors call it the Spider Force, and if we're talking about Spider-Verse Easter eggs, like in the comics, it's called the Spider Army. They had the funny scene of him riding the subway while he's wearing his Spider-Man costume and bringing the food to the party that he's going to be late at that his parents yell at him for in the previous trailers, like, you were supposed to be here on time. If you look around this scene too, you can see that everybody else is just totally unimpressed by him being in the Spider-Man costume. Like, they've probably seen him on the news and they're just like, yeah, whatever, another superhero, who cares? I lived in New York City for a couple years and everybody was generally like this on subways. Like the weirdest people would get onto subways, crazy things would happen, and unless somebody lit your clothes on fire, people just would not turn their heads to care. The reason his spidey sense goes off is because he senses something crazy is about to happen and he wants to stop it, but he's stuck with all these people and the food that he doesn't want to spill before he gets to the party, which you could think of as a funny reference to Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and the pizza that he had to deliver while also trying to be Spider-Man and saving people. He stole that guy's pizza! They actually put a bunch of Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, and Tom Holland MCU Spider-Man footage in the last big trailer, or one of the international versions of the last big trailer. The reason why they did that, I think, is because of their larger plan to move these Spider-Verse characters into live action for Avengers Secret Wars. Also, the idea that they're going to have cameo scene from at least Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the movie, like they're slowly tying the Spider-Verse characters to the other versions of live action Spider-Man. Way back when they were making the first movie, Tom Holland actually said that there had been talks for him to cameo in the first movie, and he was going to have a moment with Miles Morales talking about other Spider-Man that were out there like, wow, there's a multiverse of Spider-Man. But the problem was that they had so much Spider-Man going on in live action with Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and all the other Spider-Man movies like Spider-Man Far From Home, there just wasn't room in the schedule for him to actually do stuff for that first Into the Spider-Verse movie. The producers also were talking about putting all the versions of live action Spider-Man in the movie at some point too, like of course, there were live action elements in the first movie anyway. This time though, right now the report is the plan is in Beyond the Spider-Verse, like the part 3 movie that releases next year, is meant to be the escalation from the events of this movie and move the characters into live action, but they didn't say how many of the Spider-Verse characters will be in live action. Right now, I'm just assuming that it's at least Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen. That would be funny because Haley Steinfeld also plays the live-action version of Kate Bishop Hawkeye, so we'll see how they pull that off. It may be small chance for Peter B. Parker in some background other versions of Spider-Man. But if they had a bunch of other versions, it'd probably be CG, small, and in the background, kind of like these scenes here that you see in this movie, where you don't see them take their masks off. You just see a bunch of different versions of them in the background. Speaking of taking your mask off, they actually revealed that Andy Samberg is going to be playing the Ben Riley Scarlet Spider. They actually got a big cheer for it at CinemaCon. Well, I heard about the new Spider-Man movie, figured I would audition, maybe catch that part in my web. Aren't you just redoing the same monologue that Kirsten Dunst did like 10 years ago? Uh, yeah, aren't you just redoing the exact same Spider-Man movie from 10 years ago? <laughs> they said there was also a couple surprise cameos that they didn't tell the actors about either, and I think those are meant to be the Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield cameos. There's a slightly different version of Spider-Gwen showing him the multiverse base and them talking about what their actual mission is. Like, Miguel O'Hara of Spider-Man 2099 brought us together to try to keep the multiverse from collapsing because of all the different things that all these different versions of Spider-Man have been doing. Which is when he makes the other Tom Holland Spider-Man No Way Home reference about the nerd from Earth-19999 in Doctor Strange because they messed the multiverse up so bad with the spell. And as cool as that is, that's not the only thing that caused problems with the multiverse. Like, there are a bunch of incursions that they teased during Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. The spider army that Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, puts together is also dealing with all of those other problems, too, from other realities. When Spider-Gwen says that he's kind of like a Spider-Man crossed with a vampire, that's just because of the way Miguel O'Hara's Spider-Man powers work compared to other normal versions of Spider-Man. It's mostly a reference to his fangs and his talons, so he does have fangs naturally that grow out of his mouth and he can't retract them. They secrete a non-fatal sedative that paralyzes villains that he fights. The other big difference are the talons on his fingers and his feet that he uses to stick to walls and surfaces instead of the hairs like normal versions of Spider-Man. So it just makes him seem like a vampire version of Spider-Man, even though that's not what's actually happening. Like, he is biting people like a vampire, but he's mostly doing it to paralyze them. There's a much longer scene of this new character, Spider-Bite, who's glitching around the control room. She's meant to be based on a version that debuted during Spider-Geddon more recently, and she's from a world kind of like the world of Ready Player One, where most people spend all their time in a virtual environment as avatars. She decided to become a vigilante, fight crime, and then got recruited into the Spider-Army to fight the Inheritors during the comic book version of the story. 
There's a much longer version of that funny scene where Spider-Man 2099 calls all the other versions in the spider army to action. Everyone captures Spider-Man as they all look at their wrist devices that he gave them. We had a couple new scenes of Miles Morales using his powers like the bomb of webbing that he throws at Spider-Man 2099. The funny thing, even though they're hyping this movie as Miles Morales versus all the other versions of Spider-Man, like Miles Morales versus the Spider Army, technically the spot is supposed to be the main villain of the movie. The longer scene that they showed off of the movie at CinemaCon is just hyping up the whole connection to Avengers Kang Dynasty and the incursions and them trying to prevent universes from colliding with each other, which is what an incursion is. Like I said, just everything points to them trying to tie this Spider-Verse continuity in these characters into the live action Avengers Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars stuff. I've already talked about most of the major other versions of Spider-Man in my previous trailer video, so I'll link those below in the description. But if you spotted any other Easter eggs or references in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments and I'll name a giveaway winner for that special giveaway in the next couple of videos. Everyone click here for all my Guardians of the Galaxy 3 videos. I'll update the link as soon as I finish my post credit scene video and click here for my brand new Dune Part 2 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.